One woman who's working to bring an end to the conflict is Louise McBain, the founder of a not-for-profit organisation working in the region. She spoke to the BBC's Emily Buchanan and says the Dalai Lama and his supporters are asking for too much. She says unless they change their demands, they risk getting nowhere with the Chinese. They are not asking for cultural independence only. They are asking for defence, foreign affairs and cultural independence. The Chinese is full independence, which I know. he's made many statements saying he doesn't call for the independence of Tibet. Well, in fact, on the 6th of April in his statement, he said uh, self-rule and full decision-making except for matters concerning foreign relations and national defence. So are you saying he's switched his policy he and is switches. now including? He s switches. According to what we have read, he is definitely going for full defence, foreign affairs, and his region is about a quarter of China. That's why I want to put people aware of how important this, this whole issue is and how much conflict it brings to the Olympics, to the people, to everyone. But all along, I mean, for years, the Dalai Lama has been propagating the so-called middle way, which yes. involves not full autonomy. So are you saying this is now out of the window? This, he has now changed his policy and he is calling for full independence of Tibet. Exactly. That's what he is. He, that's what he's asking and that's what he said last week. Can I just look at your position here? Because you and your foundation presumably are hoping to raise money so that you can work inside Tibet and help with their cultural support. There's two things, so three things that we're working on. The first was to find out the facts about what the Chinese were saying. That's what we've been working on since November. We knew something would happen before the Olympics, so that's why we approached them in November. The second uh, point that's very important was to know really, truly, in writing, what was the position of His Holiness. The third now is to try to reconcile and try to convince His Holiness that we can help him on the cultural independent side. But the Dalai Lama has been calling for negotiation for years. Does it make it easier for you to work within Tibet if you are basically taking the Beijing line on these talks? Uh, when I go in to a country or an issue, it's not taking the Beijing line or the Tibetan line. I'm interested in getting this solved and to preserve the Tibetan culture. So we have to go in as fast as we can. If the demands are not reasonable, we're going to lose Tibet overall within the next two, three years. So we want to preserve. That's my main objective, is to preserve uh, the culture. How do you think the coverage of the Olympic torch has affected relations between China and the West? I think I've, I'm, I'm sending out, actually, I'm in the process of, of sending out uh, many letters regarding the facts of His Holiness and the facts of the Chinese for heads of states and leaders to really understand how important it is to look at all the different facts on both sides to be able to judge. My conclusion is that His Holiness needs to have a more reasonable approach and that we have to negotiate and firmly finish with this issue of Tibet and to save Tibet because the, the, the time and the clock is ticking and it's not appropriate to mix the Olympics and politics. I think that's very inappropriate. These athletes have been training since they're four years old. They have one chance of their lifetime and I think that this mix between the two is, is really inappropriate. Do you think it's right that the Olympic torch should be taken to Lhasa in the present circumstances, which will involve presumably a huge crackdown on any protest there? I'm not able to judge that because I'm not in Lhasa right now. But all I can say is that uh, I do encourage every head of state to be at the opening of the Olympics because there's a lot of things that they're not aware of. And I think that if we, had, if we ask Europeans to, to give us or give to another sort of uh, uh, the European Union uh, to give up a quarter of their land, what would they say? So they have to understand the facts. Yes, but you've got to look at the history. Um, the history is that China has had a pretty dismal record inside Tibet in terms of cultural oppression. That's I, the background. I think that the earlier that is solved, the better it will be for everyone. I think on the human rights issues, I think that 
We have human rights issues in many places in the world and we have to take it very seriously that one life is a lost life that's, that's horrible. And I think that the more this holiness asks for so much, the less the Chinese will come close to him. So it's very important for him to be reasonable and for us to go in, help him, and get and be proud of preserving that culture. And not only in Tibet, faith doesn't have a border. I mean, the Pope, for example, doesn't want the land in South America because there's some Catholic people there. So faith has no borders, really. So he has to really be very clear that it's cultural independence, not defense, not foreign affairs, and that it has to be in limitations of a territory that is reasonable. The Chinese are willing to negotiate on those bases, and they have given me the, those details in writing. Well, joining us here in the studio.